Vigil 2 blasting off. A show of military might from Iran uh, that's prompting serious concerns around the world. Today, Tehran tested its most advanced surface-to-surface -surface missile, a weapon that has the capability to hit Israel and parts of Europe. The move comes as tensions over Iran's nuclear program clearly escalating right now. CNN's Brian Todd is over at the Magic Wall with details. Wolf, the news today out of Iran that the Iranians have test-fired a medium-range ballistic missile called the Sajil-2. A U.S. intelligence official says this does not represent a major advancement in Iran's missile technology, but it is concerning nonetheless. And here to talk about that with us is Joe Serencioni. He is with the Plowshares Fund. This is a group that works toward non-proliferation and conflict resolution all over the world. He is joining us here as a, as a weapons expert to talk about this. First, let's talk about the range. We know that the Iranians so far have missile capability that can go roughly 400 miles from where they're located. They have missile capability that they've tested that can go about 800 miles from Iran. This latest one, we think, can go about 1,200 miles, 2,000 kilometers from Iran. And Joe, what does that mean as far as the range of this weapon and the concern for the U.S. and its allies? Well, Brian, it means two things. First, it brings a whole new range of targets potentially within range of an Iranian ballistic missile strike. And it also means that the Iranians could pull back the missile force to various parts of their country and still be able to hit key targets. For example, the U.S. NATO base in, uh, in Turkey, where we store tactical nuclear weapons. Okay. I also want to talk to you about the, uh, the fuel that this, that this weapon uses. We know, bringing some video of the test firing here, that it runs on solid fuel, not liquid fuel. What does that mean? It means two things. First of all, it means it's a mobile device. So they, they don't have to spend hours or days bringing the missile out to a launch pad, pad and pumping the fuel into it. They can put it on a truck, hide it in caves, bring it out. And here's the second thing. It means it will be ready to launch within minutes not hours or days, a much more formidable military capability. Usually when they test fire these missiles, they do it over Iranian airspace. They don't let these missiles fly over another country's airspace. That's exactly right. So it's, we, we assume it was launched from the western part of Iran going east. Is that right? The normal well, test sites are start off in the west, and then it flies west to east, impacting inside Iran itself. Now, if you're Israel, obviously you're nervous. If the U.S., you're nervous. But a lot of these Arab countries in the Gulf, whether the United Arab Emirates or Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, they're nervous about this as well. They are. This is a new uh, missile capability, and the significance of this is not just how far the missile can launch or what fuel it has, but the fact that you have a missile that goes into this range means that it's designed to carry a nuclear warhead. You don't go through this trouble to put a conventional warhead in a and missile. And what does like it this. say to you that they're doing this just at this? outreach by the Obama administration for the past year or so trying to get a more uh, a more moderate a more responsible Iranian policy the timing of this it's always hard to figure out Iranian motivations but it's one of two things either it's an in your face you're not going to push us around demonstration of their strength or it could be as is often the case with Iran and North Korea a show of strength before they make a concession. For example, the last time they tested this missile was September 28th of this year. A few days later, they made a concession, a concession in negotiations in Vienna. So we'll have to wait a few days to see what develops. Also, Joe, we want to talk about U.S. capabilities of possibly knocking these missiles out of the air if it came to that. We know that we've got uh, Aegis destroyer groups in the Mediterranean and in the Persian Gulf. They could conceivably knock this out of the air. Just this year, the Obama administration refocused the anti-missile program to focus on these interceptors exactly, SM-3 interceptors, now on station in, in the Med and in the Persian Gulf. It could uh, be an effective intercept technology against precisely this kind of missile. All right, Joe Serencioni, thanks very much for joining us. That's it, Wolf, new missile test for Iran that has the U.S. and its allies once again very concerned. As they should be. All right, Brian, thank you. Uh, Joseph Rincioni, thanks to you as well. Let's go to Jack Cafferty for the Cafferty Fell. This is a huge headache, you know, after all these months of reaching out to the Iranians. They're basically telling the president of the United States and the world, uh, maybe not. <laughs> well, those are the polite words, maybe not. That's not exactly what they're saying, but we can't say on TV what they're saying. By the way, don't we have a, like a deadline in two weeks yes, for them? Yes, end of yeah. this month. And then what happens? Then uh, they're supposed to take uh, severe sanctions. They're supposed <laughs> to take uh, ratchet it up to severe sta sanctions. More sanctions. Yeah. That's worked pretty well. Okay.